Welcome to another News Coulomb video. So, while I'm sharing some of my opinions, I want to also share some of my random thoughts and musings about the EVs of the world. And uh, I wanted to pose a you know simple question here for this plug side chat is, when are we finally going to see an automaker release a solar charged car? Now, some people might say, oh, well, we've seen solar panels on cars before. We've seen this as an option, right? We have like the Aptera is apparently moving toward production. But what I'm referring to is slightly different. What got me thinking about this is the fact that I currently have a heat pump that is, you know, <laughs> it's putting in its work, right? Uh, an EG4 heat pump that came with the option of just a direct plug-in to solar panels, right? The, the regular MC4 connectors, you plug them in, um, it has a certain voltage range, certain max amperage, and it will just run off of solar. As long as the solar is there, as long as the solar is available. And, you know, this is also based on some of my experiences with these solar generators. I, I, I don't really like the term, but I, I guess I, I get where they're coming from, from a marketing perspective. Uh, but those have like the XT60 plugs that you just plug in to the solar panels and it will just charge up on solar when, you know, the solar power is available. And it got me thinking, why hasn't that become an option for EVs? Now, I get that there's an issue with standards. I get that, you know, a lot of people will say, oh, well, EVs are generally not at home when the sun is out or you know, they're in a garage. I've heard all sorts of excuses, honestly. Um, and to me, those are e exactly that. They, they are kind of excuses because this seems to me to be a very clean and easy option. Essentially, what the automakers could do is include an MPPT in their vehicle. Now, um, what that will do is that will take solar in and convert it you know to a voltage capable of charging the battery and one of the big benefits of this is just the sheer efficiency of MPPTs right they are nearly um they're like 97 98 99% efficient a lot of them so you're really just using a DC to DC converter, right? You're, you're no longer doing the path that we currently see with EVs charging at home where there's a conversion. So if you're going to charge your EV at home right now with solar, you bring the solar in, the solar then feeds into an inverter of some sort, gets turned into AC. So it goes from DC to AC, that AC then feeds through your EVSC, your electric vehicle supply equipment, and then gets fed into your car's onboard charger, which takes that AC and converts it back into DC and then feeds it into the battery. So having a solar charging option would literally just take solar power and step up or step down the voltage depending and feed it directly into the battery. And it takes out two different cycles of, of conversions, which realistically probably cost somewhere between 15 to 20% of the total energy. So it just seems to me to, to be a really clean option for EV owners who want the ability to just set out a half dozen, dozen solar panels and plug in. Obviously, there's going to be some minimum voltage requirements. There's going to be some maximum voltage requirements. Same with current, right? I'm not saying that there needs to be anything massive. And one of the other things that I haven't seen yet is 
high voltage MPPTs, right? So typically what we see is an MPPT that maybe takes high voltage, like 400, 500 volts, then takes that voltage and then steps it down to 12 volt, 24 volt, sometimes 36, 48 is very common, right? And it will charge a 48 volt battery off of a 400 volt input, right? That EG4 heat pump that I have, I think it's a voltage range off the top of my head. It's like nine, somewhere between 90 volt and 380 volt is the, the range of voltages that that heat pump will accept, right? Input and then use that to run the air conditioning compressor and the heat pump compressor. So an EV would just need a higher voltage MPPT that matches the voltage of that EV's battery. And I have to imagine that should be fairly straightforward. I mean, as it is, we, we already see the sort of programming with, within these EVs that allow for things like regenerative braking. In fact, uh, on the RAV4 EV, one of the early models that I saw, someone had posted up how they were charging it on solar by bypassing the inputs in the RAV4 EV uh, from the regenerative braking. And so they were basically feeding DC directly into the battery from a solar charge converter <laughs> that they had set up to basically bypass the regenerative braking shunt. And so this is one of those things where EVs already seem like they're like 90% there and it really is just a matter of saying hey look why don't we just create this secondary plug you can have the same sort of controls in place right you can't go into drive um, when it's plugged in right there's a cutoff there that maybe cuts off power to the you know the the traction inverter or whatever and says hey nope no no going into drive you still got to plug in right so there's a possibility for that um, possibly even an override right if you want to be able to plug in solar on a travel trailer that you're towing but you want to be able to keep that plugged in and generating power while you're driving. Maybe there's a possibility. I see some potential safety issues with that, so I wouldn't necessarily see an automaker encouraging that. But mostly what I'm talking about is you have a, an array in your yard, and rather than do the rigmarole of converting to AC and then AC to AC and then AC to DC again, um, you just have a proprietary plug of some sort that allows you to plug your solar directly into your car and charge with DC. Uh, so, you know, GM Energy had a the, part of their power backup system. They, they do allow a direct DC feed into their, into their charger unit that's also acting as a backup and a vehicle to home option, right? And so these are, this is the type of functionality that I could see fed very easily through that. And actually it's very possible that the Nax J3400 is something that enables this in a very clean and easy and straightforward way. Because for those automakers who were able to implement Nax J3400 properly, as in just a single port, it means that that port is capable of both AC and DC charging, and the car takes whatever feed it's getting from that same plug and says, oh, this is an AC feed, route power to my onboard AC charger and charge the battery, or oh, this is a DC feed, take this DC power and feed it directly into the power into the battery at this voltage and this current right so there's already this functionality kind of there right if especially like i said with something like uh nax j3400 it could be a very simple straightforward you maybe don't even need a secondary plug it's just an add-on module that says feed 
six kilowatt of solar power through this module and that six kilowatts gets dumped right into the battery. All you have to do is adjust again for the voltage discrepancies and you're very unlikely to be generating enough solar power to push past the DC current capabilities of even an average you know EV. So anyway, I, I just thought that was an interesting you know, sort of thought experiment because why haven't we seen that yet, right? Just a, just a plug where, hey, plug your, plug your solar panels directly into your car, no losses, just charge directly there. And, you know, a lot of people say these like vehicle to home chargers just are a little too expensive. They aren't worth the value proposition, but if you add that functionality as well, where it's a vehicle to home, it's a solar converter, right? An MPPT, it's a direct charger for your EV, like an off-grid charger for your EV. Now, all of a sudden, you're seeing a little bit more of a value proposition for a unit that is essentially just taking your solar power directly and dumping it right into your car's battery. So um, anyway, I'd, I'd love to hear what you think. Is that an option that you would be interested in if an automaker could set up their car so that if you wanted to, you had the option of being able to simply plug in, you know, MC4 connectors, a combiner box from your your solar panels, and then just plug it directly into your EV and charge charge directly with that DC power. Who knows, maybe it would be a secondary EVSC that functions off of DC rather than AC. Um, but uh, yeah, let me know what, what you think. Is, is that something that you would be interested in? Is that something that you would want an automaker to pursue? Or is that something that if it was third party possible, like I said, with Nax J3400, it's a Nax J3400 EVSE that's literally just a DC to DC converter uh, pulling power directly from your solar panels. Let me know. And uh, as always, thank you for watching.